Hey, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video of Top 3 Tips. And yes, I know you're going to say grief. You really do take your time with these. You really do just take ages between videos. And I can only apologize for that. My life is manic. It is. And I'm not even going to offer excuses. But today, I've got some absolute belters for you. Now, these aren't just tips that you're going to see and you're never really going to utilize. I try and offer tips that you can actually implement into your game. If you want to get involved in this series, what you can do is you can send me any tips or tricks that you've got over to my Discord or alternatively hit me up on Twitter. If you've got any videos or anything like that, please feel free to share them to me. The links are going to be down in the description below to all of those. But as and when I get the tips, I can look over them, I can figure out how to do them, and then I can try and showcase them here if I haven't done so already. If you are new around here, I post weekly content up here on YouTube, and I also stream four times a week on Twitch from Thursday through to Sunday from about 8 o'clock through till 11 to midnight, where you can watch me throw my elo away trying to figure out all these tips and tricks in-game rather than in a safe space. But come and hang out. It's a good laugh over there, and we've got some great people in the community. So tip number one for today is going to be for getting a capital fire arrow to here at the top of the cash stairs on Clubhouse. Now, I've been able to do this from a single bullet hole, and I can only apologize because I cannot remember for the life of me where I saw this, but I had it saved on my phone, and it's so cheeky. I've, I've had this for a couple of weeks now. I've been sat on it, and I just I had to try it. I had to come in here, figure it out, try it out, and I cannot believe just how good it is. I genuinely can't. So what I'm going to do is, as you can see, Rook is here at the top of the cache stairs. This is a pretty strong area to try and hold. And it's somewhere when I'm on defense, I normally sit. But if you come into this stock room just below, tuck yourself into this corner and then look at the light, come up to the panel, and then you're going to shoot this spot here. Now, it does take a bit of practice. I'm not even going to pretend it doesn't. But if you can get this off, which isn't that difficult to do, you can put a single bullet hole and then you can put the fire arrow up through that. Now, I am going to showcase this in a little bit more detail in just a second, but think about it. Even with the addition of Wamai pulling these Capital Firebolts everywhere, it's still going to be really strong if you can get it up through that hole, and it's not that difficult to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go downstairs. Now, at the time, I was trying to showcase this to Red to show him how to do it, and he picked it up on his first go. It's that easy to do. It's just knowing where exactly to shoot. So once you're in the stock, as I say, you tuck right into this corner here. Go all the way left and back, and then you're going to stay standing. You're going to aim at this light come up to the panel just above it and then you can see exactly where my laser sight goes just between these two like little screws here that are holding the floor together you're going to shoot directly between that now what i would do is i would put two or three bullet holes there to make sure you're getting through each layer nine times out of ten there is going to be a rotate at the top of the cache stairs it's fairly common to happen and um, we put it in nearly every single time because it's a good rotate and allows that person to control the construction but if you put a couple of bullet holes up here you can then just shoot the fire arrow straight through it. And as you'll see, it's going to hit that point on the roof and then cascade down. Now, what I've done is I've actually moved further back so the fire arrow can't get me. But think about this logically. If you're pushed away from that area and to where I'm stood now, you're at the top of the cache stairs where if anyone is down there, they can just shoot up at you. If you're playing as Capital, as soon as you fire this fire arrow up there, you can come and peek that cache stairs if it's clear. If, however, the defender is a little bit smarter and doesn't want to run out of that cover, they're going to have to go one of two ways, either straight forward where I'm shooting at there towards the garage where there's probably people or the main wall is open, or they go towards the rotate, either of which is going to result in a lot of damage to that person or death. Now I'm going to go ahead and show this one more time just so you can see how easy it is. Once you've done it a couple of times in like a terrorist hunt or a custom game, it's not that difficult to do. Even if the wall at the top is sealed, put a couple of extra bullet holes there and it will get through that wall and still clear out the top of cash stairs. This can then facilitate a push into a big open area that you've just created in the defense and get a good foothold in the middle of all of that. Now, I will recommend droning this just to make sure someone is actually up there. Otherwise, you're wasting fire arrows, but hopefully it helps. Tip number two for today is going to be Hibana over on Oregon. How many times have you come to get the hatch? You've banned out Kaid. You think this is going to be easy. They've got a mute jammer and you can't get through it. Now, this tip came from a Varsity Gaming video. Um, I watched it, I saw it, and I was like, wow, I never, ever knew that. So I brought it over to a custom game, tried it out. And if you put a Hibana pellets right on this corner here, when you set it off, the mute jammer doesn't actually reach that corner pellet. So you can blow up a single section, kind of like a Maverick hole, and shoot the mute jammer out, allowing you to then set off the rest of the Kairos pellets. Now, this is one of those tips that kind of relies on um, you having Hibana, the defenders having mute, them being downstairs, obviously. 
um, and Kaid being banned out. But a lot of these things you can actually facilitate. You know, if you go ahead and ban Kaid, you know it's going to force them to either take mute or let the hatch get opened. Now, this does mean that you don't have to worry bringing a Maverick and you can bring that utility elsewhere in the form of a different operator. And for obvious reasons, you're kind of going to need this upstairs lobby area to be clear or at least have control over the area. But nevertheless, if mute has got his jammer down and he's attempting to juggle the hatch, He's going to get taken out from this hole that you've just created. And he's going to be really surprised when one of the pellets just randomly goes off. Now, you can just walk down the stairs and try and take this mute jammer out. I am well aware of that. But this exposes you a lot less. And it also gives you a dirty little angle down into the site before you open the hatch. Hopefully, when you're stuck in one of those situations where, you know, someone on your team is saying, I can't get the hatch open. I can't get it. You know, they've mute jammed it. And we're just stuck because we've got Hibana and we just cannot get through it. You can just say to them, place it here, shoot here, shoot the Hibana pellets here, and you're going to get through easy. Being able to get this wall open through either using thermite on the, the brown wall that you can just see there, that soft destruction, or alternatively utilizing Hibana in this manner, it's going to be very, very difficult to keep this hatch sealed from now on. Every time we think we get away around it, you know, the defenders go ahead and start opening all the soft walls so you can't utilize that. You think, okay, that way's out now. How else can we get it open? And we just keep finding more and more ways amongst the community to get the hatch open. Now, obviously, this is top three tips. However, because I've been talking a little bit about this soft wall here and how you can get it open with thermite, I figured I'd go ahead and showcase it just in case you didn't know about this. But what you can do is a lot of teams have actually started opening this wall up with shotguns and such just to stop you from placing a thermite charge onto that wall in the classroom and still being able to get the hatch. Now, because of this, it's prompted me to look at a few other ways and I showcased this to Red the other night and he wasn't actually aware of it. So I figured I'd showcase it here as well as a fourth tip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and place a thermite breaching charge down. Now, most people would normally place it where this Harambe like poster is. They place it here and by putting it on the wall, it just opens that hatch up. It seems to reach and you can even go right the way over to about here and you would probably still get the hatch. I couldn't believe just how far it goes. But what you may not know is that this wall you can also do it on. Even though it's parallel to the wall, um, it doesn't look like it's going to get it. When the thermite charge goes off, it does actually open the hatch. So if that wall is left intact, please utilize this. Thermite mains out there, this is diamond to know. So it will definitely help you out. Don't think you can't get through this hatch. There is always a way. The final tip for today is going to be another one I've been sitting on for a little while. I've actually been trying to utilize this. And uh, if you're protecting the master bedroom, you can actually do it from the bar down below on Clubhouse. Now, Ben helped me out with this. And yes, you can see he's using an ACOG to make it nice and clear as to what he's looking at. But you don't really need an ACOG at all. What you do need is preferably some impacts. Go ahead and open the floor just here on the corner of the bed in the master bedroom. And as you can see, the line of sight takes you right the way down to the bar. And it's going to go the other way as well. You're going to be able to look from the bar up to this window in the master bedroom, which if you're trying to defend it, is usually a pretty good place to cover. With the master bedroom being as open as it is, it's often very difficult to stay in here and actually contest the windows and all of the angles that maybe have been created. But the best thing about this is not only can you protect that window in that way, you can also do it for this window here in the gym if you go ahead and impact this area just here next to the hatch. Hell, you don't even need to impact it. You can just shoot a load of bullet holes up through it. But as you can see, that looks all the way down to next to the pool table. And it allows someone that may be playing down here trying to control the main stairs and stop a push from there to look up to these windows. You can look at that one just there, or if you come just behind the bar, you can look up to the master bedroom window as well. Now you can see the angle it gives you is actually quite far back, but being able to play it from behind the bar means that you can stop people from moving around down here. You can stop the rogue nook from uh, creeping up the main stairs or alternatively, you know, just be that cannon fodder to let your team know that someone's going to be pushing up the main stairs, which I very often am that guy. Um, you're so close to the site itself that you can rotate back up here and it's not going to be an issue at all. You can very quickly get up those main stairs, control the breach or do whatever you need to do. Any attacker that's pushing up to these windows, they're going to have a hard time. You know, they've probably droned it out, seen that there's destruction on the floor, but don't really know what's going on with it. They're going to scope around the room and they've got a lot of angles to cover as it is without being forced to look down through the floor as well. You can see Ben's little head down there behind the bar. Um, very, very rare that anyone's going to be looking down there. It really is. And quite frankly, unless you sit all the way back and the attacker is right up against the window looking down and, you know, not getting shot at by anyone else, it's unlikely you're going to get shot from there, from that angle. Whereas you have a massive advantage going from down to up here because you've got the longer range. You're not as exposed to different areas. You do have the cover of the bar and you can sit here. And as you can see, I'm just shooting the floor open here. I'm not putting a massive amount of rounds through it. You can make the hole as big or as small as you want to, depending on the way you're trying to play this. 
the higher up you shoot the floor, obviously the higher the angle is going to be and the more exposed you're going to be. But as you can see, you know, you're going to get loads of different angles here. They're not going to be that big and you're going to be able to play them quite easily. The other option is just here on this angle on the corner of the hatch, I guess, just down in pool. Now, the problem with this one is obviously you are exposed to the double window that is just in front of you, should it be open. But you can play this accordingly, you know. If someone is pushing the gym, it's late in the round and you're waiting for them to hop in, then you can come and play that angle. You can either try and engage people while they're outside. You can try and get an angle on them or alternatively, you can just be patient and wait for them to hop in through the window when they're busy with other people and just take them out as they jump in. If you've managed to deny the main wall, these windows are going to become even more vital and even more important. So it's definitely something to keep in your back pocket for those matches. I'm afraid that is going to be it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And as I say, hopefully you can implement these in some way, shape or form. Now, these aren't tips that you're going to be able to utilize on every single game. And I'm well aware of that. But what they are, they are tips that if you are stuck in a situation and you want to try and do a specific thing, hopefully this can help you do exactly that. If you did enjoy the video, please consider hitting the thumbs up. And if you don't already, make sure to subscribe. I've said this before, but I'm going to try and put more and more of these tips videos together as opposed to just gameplay that I've been doing recently. Working on my schedule, I'm trying to figure it out so that I can do more tips, I can do more map breakdowns, and I'm looking at revisiting all of the maps again now that we've had a few seasons. You know, I mean, my map tips and tricks videos are getting on now and the maps and the metas have changed quite a bit. So hopefully I can showcase some of the things that I've learned from my time playing Siege. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay reckless and relentless.